Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Box 2D. Now this is something that requires no introduction. So here is an introduction. Box 2D open source 2D physics engine. Chances are if you're using a game engine that does 2D physics, it's probably using Box 2D behind the scenes. This was actually written by Aaron Cotto, hopefully I pronounced that right. He was a, uh, a programmer at Blizzard. It's been around for well over a decade now, been used in dozens if not hundreds, if possibly thousands of commercial games. Probably one of the most famous of which for the physics perspective anyways is Angry Birds uh, and we're talking about it today because there was a recent release recent being a couple weeks ago now but as you will see in just a few minutes uh, box 2d does not get a ton of releases now I'm gonna do a follow-up video shortly in the future kind of a basics of how 2d physics engines work so I'm not gonna really cover that we're gonna focus 100% on box 2d today so if you're interested in checking it out uh, it is available at box 2d.org I will of course have that available in the leak document down below and as I mentioned to start things off this this is an open source framework, so you can find it over on GitHub. Now, one of the interesting things about the most recent release, the 2.4.0 release that happened two weeks ago as of today, um, is they changed the source code license. It is now under the MIT open source license. This is a very liberal license in that uh, you can use it commercially, you can modify it, you can distribute it, you can use it privately. You just don't hold them any liability or warranty, and you have to keep the license and copyright details intact. The previous version was Zlib, and frankly, I don't know why they switched that up, but Zlib is also a very permissive library. So end of the day, this doesn't change a whole lot. So here we are in um, Box 2D. I'm going to show you how to get up and running with Box 2D first, and then we'll hop back in here and take a look at what happened in this release. So if you want to get up and running with it, obviously you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a Git client installed, and you are going to need a C++ build environment of some form. You could use build tools if you so wish, or the free versions of Visual Studio such as Community, or anything with CMake. So you could use MingW, G++, whatever version of uh, a C compiler you want to use, you should be good to go. So to come in here and clone it like so. So just grab that, grab that guy right there, and then we're gonna open up a command prompt. In this case, I want to get a Visual Studio, actually I want to do command prompt for Visual Studio. So right there, developer command prompt for Visual Studio. And let me just zoom that in so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so first thing we're gonna to need to do is clone that code. Of course, if you're cloning code, you gotta put it in the one place you clone code, and that is the temp folder. Everything goes in the temp folder, which is kind of ironic because in the background, I'm cleaning up my temp folder. It's currently at 126,000 items or uh, 36 gigabytes that that's uh, getting rid of. Uh, so I've got a fresh temp folder for now, and let's put something in it. So here we go, we're cloning this down. Obviously, you know how GitHub or Git works at this point in time. It goes Gonna pull down. Ooh, come on, enter. Ah, I'm in some kind of an insert mode. All right, here we go. So it's gonna pull down all of our stuff. There it is. Very straightforward and easy to work with. And now I'm gonna go. Oh, still got a few things deleting. Let's go into the box 2D folder that was just created, like so. Now there's something interesting that happened to me when I tried this out. I used to have Visual Studio 2017 and 2019 installed on this machine, and this build script that we're about to run, build.bat it got the wrong one. Also on top of that, it tries to build a solution file, but if it finds CMake tools, uh, it errors out there. So do be aware there are some problems that can come up here. Uh, but what you wanna just do is come in and run build. If you're on Linux or uh, Mac or whatever, it's gonna be build shell or build.sh. So just gonna go ahead and run that. This is gonna inv invoke the, um, the CMake based uh, build system. It's gonna build all of our code from the command line. And then it's gonna try and create an SLN file, throw up and give us an error. But we don't really care about that one right there. So what we're doing right now is we are building. The big output right there is that guy right there, box2d.lib. That is generally what you would use in your own project. Uh, also stay tuned on the station. I'm gonna show you how to actually link in and get started with C++ libraries. So you don't have to build this stuff from scratch. I'm gonna show you a much easier way to do. That'll be uh, any day now. So do stay tuned on the channel. So I'm going to let this go ahead and run. So as I mentioned, on this particular machine, it fails to create the SLN files. And you see this error message right here. That's because it did not produce the solution file. There are ways around that, but I'm not going to focus on that too much because this did successfully build what we want. So you can see here, what we want to do now is go into unit test. And this is a great way to showcase, oh, sorry, not unit test, test bed. So going to test bed here, and that should have just built the executable. You can see it right there. So we'll go ahead and we'll run that. And this will give you a good idea of what Box2D is all about. Another thing that they just did in this release is they updated this to an IM GUI based user interface. So you can see what Box2D 
can do. So let's open that up. You can see here we got a ton of different controls on here. We can switch over here to the test and we've got a ton of tests we can run. So we come in here, say we want to see some force, we can apply some force. The controls are generally up here. So boom, so you can see we're a little bit off axis. So let's just do a, a raid and raise into the side. I can't, I can't steer. All right, the controls are a little screwy and boom. All right, so you can see one thing in action. We've got things like, um, so obviously you do collision handling and such right here. So you can do uh, ray cast based collisions. We can do shape cast collisions. We've got sensors that trigger off when they hit something. Uh, we've got things like joint control. So you can see a bridge example in action, uh, gears that are running and, and going. We've got pulleys, uh, we've got revolute. Do, 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 do. Now, interestingly enough, we have rope joint like here and then we have an entire category for ropes in general use the commas in this particular case to control it so there you can see so that is what box 2d is doing for you this is all doing it behind the scenes it's doing physics calculations for you those calculations you then apply to your your uh, real world physics objects so you know if you got game sprites or whatever this is controlling their movement but at the end you're still working on the rest of these things uh it kind of tying the two together but all the examples you want to see are available here we got some really advanced examples here under the examples category but this does give you an idea of what box 2d is all about and basically covers all of your needs uh, we've also got things like there's a platformer example in here doesn't seem to work but there let's see what that does nothing all right so I'll get it out of there um, actually I may have just broken everything I think I broke everything <laughs> okay I may have broken everything so it's a good time to stop with the demos but what you want to do is you want to really check out what it's all about just head on into that test bed folder once you've gone ahead and built box 2d and it's a good showcase of all of the functionality you're going to need specifically you can also go in there check the source code for those things all of the source code for all of the examples are there it's a great way to learn exactly what is going on here so now we're gonna head on back over here and look at what is in this release. So as I mentioned earlier, new release about two weeks ago, and this doesn't happen very often. Now, a lot of reason behind that is simply because Box2D is really kind of mature at this point in time. Um, so there's not a lot of bugs to go through. We look down here. Uh, okay, where did I go? Releases. Hmm. Okay, I'm a little confused. Releases. There, here we go. I'll go into tags. So we had this release and the previous release was on 2014 and then 2013. So as you can see, there aren't an absolute ton of releases to box um, 2D at this point in time. So let's see what's gone on here. So documentation was changed into deoxygen format. We have a CMake build system. Again, I've kind of run into a couple of glitches. Again, if you have Visual Studio 2017 and 2019 installed, make sure you fire up the 2017 command prompt. They seem to like interfere with each other otherwise. So it'll find the 2017 install under your 2019 version and, and fail um but it, that's just sort of a thing that's here by the way i also found that if i have cmake build system set up then it doesn't build the solution files correctly i, I didn't really test in too much more uh unit testing support uh, continuous integration testing with travis uh they've limited use of c++ specifically it now uses null pointers and override it gives you an idea that how long box 2d has been around that they're just mixing in some c++ features right now and again that's not really that rare kind of godot is taking the same approach until now it's been c++03 um we got restructured folders renamed files to better match open source standards it is now under the mit license again i believe it used to be zlib license i don't know the reason for the change um removed float 32 and 64 and box 2d projects to now github sponsors github sponsors sort of like a patron that github is doing and i think if you're actually following a github project Project, they get all of the money through GitHub sponsor, so it's a better option than Patreon for backing code people, by the way. Uh, we've got some changes to collisions. Uh, chain and edge shapes must now be one-sided, broad phase optimization, and added the B2 shape cast for linear shape casting. And then we got some things in the dynamics, probably the key ones to point out here. There's now a new experimental 2D cloth rope. Uh, joints are now predictive and not stateful. Uh, better handling for running multiple worlds. Um, which is actually going to be quite handy if you're doing like, um, you know, two player split screen, each one would have their own separate physics simulation, potentially, uh, it has better support for that kind of stuff. Um, static bodies are never awake. So on OpenGL 3.3 is required for the test bed. Uh, and it now uses the dear GUI, um, so dear I am GUI, uh, user interface. We saw that guy in action again. That's probably where you want to head to check things out. I uh, had them back here once again. They've got a ton of code for you to get up and going. You can find a lot of it again here in the test bed. Um, so if you want to learn a specific thing, like how to implement, 
you know, collisions, dominoes, and so on. There is an example right here, walks you through pretty much everything you need to know. And again, I'm going to hopefully follow this up with a bit of a video on uh, just 2D physics for beginners. Kind of walks you through the concepts, not specific to Box2D, but Box2D being the most prevalent physics engine out there. It's what I'm using for that. Uh, so anyways, that is it. Uh, a lot of stuff uh, here in this particular release. If you have never jumped into 2D physics before, Box2D is going to be a trip. There is a reason why everybody uses it, and this seems like nice improvements in this particular version. There's a little bit of, of problems and glitches in the build system right now. Hopefully they, they get resolved uh, before the... I don't know, the next update in six years. Yeah, so now they're showing up. So here we can see, yeah, six years since the last version. So uh, that is a new release. Doesn't happen all that often. And uh, there's a reason for that. Once again, it's a very mature uh, library for sure. So that's it. Box2D, have you used it? What do you think of it? And uh, yeah, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.